15, Caroline Peters. Well, good evening, fans, and welcome to Saints Field on the campus of Flagler College here in St. Augustine, Florida, for the NCAA Southeast Region Championship match. Women's soccer action coming your way as the Flagler College Saints host the Wingate University Bulldogs. Chad Jackson with Dan McGuire to bring you the action. Second game today here in St. Augustine. Our first game was a thriller as Nova Southeastern defeated Emory Riddle 2-1 to win the South Region Championship and earn a berth in Sunday's NCAA quarterfinal that will take place right here at Saints Field. Who will meet them? It will be one of these two teams. And, Dan, you've got the home team in Flagler. Unblemished on the season, just one tie, 21-0-1. The home team, all expectation on them. And then you have Wingate, a team that was picked seventh in their conference at the beginning of the year. They run it through the regional. They are playing with house money right now. Who has more pressure, do you think, the home team in Flagler or a team like Wingate? Um, I feel that the Flagler Saints have the most pressure upon them tonight due to being at their field and they want to obviously continue their unbeaten streak. So I feel like all the pressure's on them. But Wingate's had some surprising results that have surprised a lot of teams in their journey to this point in their season. So I feel like we're in for a good game tonight. Well, you've got two teams. Flagler, this is their third straight NCAA regionals appearance, but obviously the most success they have had in the postseason, making it to the championship match. Wingate is making its sixth NCAA appearance, but the first since 2000. 15, and they have actually won at this region before back in 2013. Obviously, none of the players are part of that squad here, but from a program standpoint, they have a history of playing well in the postseason. Yeah, I feel like when you've got that history behind you, you want to try and get your team onto that history as well as the most recent team to win or do well. So it's something that they'll shine a light on their college's program or their university's program. And obviously with the Flagler Saints, they want to try and be more successful under the influence of Coach Ashley Martin. So I feel like tonight's going to be a really good game and test who's going to come out on top. Unlike the first matchup we had when it was Emory Riddle and Nova Southeastern coming from the same conference they had played earlier in the year. These are two teams from different conferences, Flagler from the Peach Bell Conference, Wingate from the South Atlantic Conference. They have not met this season. They do have some common opponent history, however. Wingate's road to get to this final, they beat North Georgia 1-0 on an own goal to get here. Flagler, of course, in the same conference with North Georgia, that's their only mark on their record. They had a 2-2 draw against North North Georgia during the regular season. So we'll see what what holds what's in the cards for these two teams as we get set for the opening kick. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. Chad Jackson with Dan McGuire back with you here at Saints Field getting ready for the start of the Southeast Region Championship match between Wingate and Flagler. 
Wingate has the lower seed. They will be wearing the dark jerseys. They will be moving from right to left on your screen. Flagler is the higher seed. will be wearing the white jerseys tonight. And here is the starting lineup. First for the visiting team on the scoreboard, the Wingate University Bulldogs. Abby Frail is the goalkeeper out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. She is a first team all South Atlantic Conference selection. McKenna DeLong is a sophomore forward from Reading, Pennsylvania. She'll be wearing number two. Carly Veit, number three, is a junior midfielder from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Kayla Williamson is a redshirt sophomore midfielder wearing number five out of Summerfield, North Carolina. Jess LaFrancis wearing number nine, a freshman midfielder from Hickory, North Carolina. Morgan Zanardi is a midfielder, a junior from Haverhill, Massachusetts, wearing number 14. Number 15 is Chandler Hendricks, a 5'10 defender, a sophomore from Sharpsburg, Georgia. Brianna Dottillo is a freshman midfielder from Mastic, New York. She'll be wearing number 18. Kristen DiBiase wearing number 23, a junior defender from Deer Park, New York. Taylor Krakauer is a senior forward from Wayne, New Jersey, wearing number 26. And Caitlin Cox is a redshirt sophomore forward from Archdale, North Carolina, wearing number 27. The interim head coach for Wingate University is Jack Vundum. For Flagler College, again, the top seed in this region and the host. Goalkeeper will be number one, Sarah Lisa Dubell. A 6'1 junior from Germany. Hannah Dolores is a 5'1 four junior forward from St. John's, Florida. She'll be wearing number three. Annie Habib is a 5'4 junior from Salisbury, North Carolina. She'll be wearing number four. Sarah Carr, a 5'9 sophomore defender from Charleston, West Virginia, wears number five. Number six is a 5'6 midfielder from Madrid, Spain, Conchi Sanchez. Charlene Nowatny is a 5'6 senior from Germany. She'll be wearing number seven. Chloe Byrne is a 5'4 sophomore midfielder from Annapolis, Maryland, wearing number eight. Sarah Sandberg will be telling a lot more about her as this match progresses. A 5'4 junior forward from Sweden, wearing number 10. Josephine Nielsen, a 5'11 freshman forward from Sweden, wearing number 16. Shannon Matei is a 5'6 defender from St. Augustine, Florida, wearing number 20. And Lorraine Lopez is a 5'4 junior from Mexico City, Mexico, wearing number 26. We are underway here from Saints Field. And Flagler with possession after the opening kick. Again, wearing white jerseys with red shorts and immediately on the attack is Flagler ball dumped into the corner, but it'll go out for a Wingate throw in. The Bulldogs again out of the South Atlantic Conference. Handball whistled there against Flagler applying pressure. And it will be a free kick for the Bulldogs. Wingate comfortable in their 4-3-3 formation, which they have played most of the year. Flagler usually a 3-4-3 formation, but that can change depending on the way matches progress. And really trying to look to get the ball to Sarah Sandberg as Wingate with it here with the back line. The Francis in the midfield looking to pick out her, plays it back, and it's a long ball sent forward, looking for the target forward of Kaitlin Cox, but played away by the Saints. Now Nowatney on it for Flagler, dumps it in for Sandberg, and Frail out of goal, plays it out for a throw in, and that's a matchup, Dan, we're gonna be looking at in this match because you have the number one and number two goalkeepers in the southeast region in Frail and Dubell for Flagler and for Wingate. Wingate stutters this one. And that's deflected. Pressure again. Lewatney comes away with the ball for Flagler. Centers it in the box. It takes a deflection. And Frail is right there to pounce on it. And we've seen two aggressive plays from Frail so far in goal for Wingate. Ball play forward. Now Cox has it for the Bulldogs. Cox centers it. Zanardi taken off the ball there by the Saints. 
Flagler looking to get it forward. Sandberg, one touch for Nowotny. Nowotny back to Sandberg. Sandberg, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Touches the passer, and that is going to go in for the yeah. goal with just two minutes and 48 seconds gone on the clock. Sarah Sandberg with her 24th goal of the season. And Charlene Nowotny with her 20th assist of the season. And that's something these fans here in St. Augustine have seen all year long, those two hooking up. Yeah, they're, this partnership of Charlene Nowotny and Sarah Sandberg been effectively throughout the season. And it's been where most of the goals have come from and most of the victories have come from. But as I say, you can't have two individuals in the team. It's all a team effort. And obviously, Flagler's just proven that with a different combination of players and it's resulted in a goal. Well, and that goal started with the dispossession back here when Zanardi lost the ball. It traveled three quarters of the field to get that goal. And again, Nowani, so it was Sandberg to Nowani, back to Sandberg. And that goal puts the hometown Saints up 1-0, just like we said, less than three minutes into the start of this match. And now this puts all the pressure, Dan, on the Bulldogs. Yeah, I feel like the early goal from Flagler's so I've turned the tail was a bit. Shot into the box, and that a little bit more of a service than a shot. It goes wide of frail, and so it'll be a goal kick for Wingate. But obviously, you couldn't have scripted a better start for the Saints here this evening. Now we'll see how Wingate responds. We saw it in our first match between Emory Riddle and Nova Southeastern, where Nova Southeastern, the favored squad, or at least the squad predicted to win, scored early, but Embry-Riddle able to come back with the equalizer. Now Wingate will have to try and do that, as Cox has it here for the Bulldogs. Cox through the middle of the field, dumps it into the box, but just too long of a run for Morgan Zanardi to try and get onto. Dubell able to come up with the ball, and she will punch it forward. Long, long punt. Headed forward by the Bulldogs. Cox gets a foot to it, but it's tracked back by Lopez. Played all the way back to Dubel. She'll send it forward. And now another long ball looking for Sandberg. And that's going to be a foul as Sanchez is fouled. We can be aggressive. Someone can mark the tight and the other two drop. And it'll be a free kick for Flagler. Conchi Sanchez, 5'6", senior from Madrid, Spain. Gets up off the turf, and it will be a free kick. Nawani to deliver the free kick here. It's straight on goal, but about midway between midfield and the box. Nawani dumps it in, headed away by Wingate. And then played Keep them in there. off for a throw in for the Bulldogs. Far side throw in. Sent forward, but Cox has to track back to maintain possession. She gives up possession. Nowatney looking for Sandberg. Cleared out, but only as far as Dolores. Now the Saints with it, possessing. That's deflected. Turnover gives it to Wingate. Zanardi plays this wide. Sprinting up the left flank is McKenna DeLong. DeLong into the box. Cuts it back. And now her cross is blocked effectively by the Saints. Now Flagler will try to counter. Josephine Nielsen up the right side. Ball looking for Sanchez, intercepted by the Bulldogs. And now Flagler. Nice track back by Dottillo, but it still ends up with the Saints. And that one just a little too behind Sanchez, but Sanchez comes back and gets possession. One thing I'm seeing here, Dan, is the Saints do not give up on any possession. If they... 
are dispossessed or if the pass is behind them, they will track back and they will try and regain possession at all costs. Yeah, I've, we've seen this throughout the season and it's been very effective in the victorious team of Fagla. So I think it's all down to the coaching team to get it drilled into their players. So and a lot of high pressure here from Wingate searching for that equalizer. Wingate does maintain possession. Plays it back to the center back, Hendricks, and now through the midfield. Looking for Cox and Zanardi. Zanardi heads it, but it's taken away from her by Sarah Carr. Carr tracks back, or excuse me, Zanardi tracks back, wins possession back for the Bulldogs. A little bit sloppy here in the midfield. But here comes Sandberg. Sandberg has it. Sandberg keeps possession. Tries to find Habib on the left side. She had cut to the middle when Sandberg played it wide. But again, Habib trying to keep possession. As Flagler will now have it at midfield. Dolores back to the center back car. And all the way back to DeBell. Dubell is 0.64 goals against average this season. One of the best, not only in the Peach Bowl, but in the nation. As Flagler maintains possession to Watney through the midfield. Tries to throw that pass and then a foul, a hard challenge. There by Wingate as Habib was fouled by Hendricks. And it will be a free kick again for Nowotny. Again, straight on goal, a little bit closer than the previous one. Will she have a chance to try a goal from here? Um, I feel like she will. And but she does. It hops once, but Frail is right there to pick it up. Maybe a little bit out of her range, but still, any ball like that, you want to get it on frames, you yeah. know what will happen. We saw that in the first match today. Sure it did. Sure it did. Throw in for Wingate in front of the Bulldogs bench. It'll be Carly Veit. Sending it back to DiBiase and now all the way back to Hendricks. Hendricks will then get it ahead. DeLong will win a throw again for the Bulldogs. So credit Wingate. Shaken, obviously, but not completely rattled. They've put some good pressure on the Saints here after conceding that early first goal. As this one's played to the far side and then dumped in for Zanardi. Zanardi lays it off. And Wingate trying to get a cross in, but some nice work defensively. And it's going to be a corner kick, one by... The Bulldogs, so nice pressure up the far side and a corner kick coming. Sorry, I can't see who's taking the corner kick from our broadcast position. It comes in near post and actually hits the side netting. So first corner kick of the match for either team results in a goal kick for the Saints. Taylor Krakauer, who had the corner kick. We'll have to remember that for the next time as that ball is headed to Krakauer. She tracks it down in the midfield, plays it forward, but no Bulldogs are there. And the Saints will settle it. Past the 10 minute mark of this match, 1 0. Flagler with the lead and now on the attack. Nowatney to Sanchez. Sanchez wide for Nielsen, and then Nielsen dispossessed. Delay, delay, delay. That was a nice play by Carly Veit to win possession for Wingate. But Flagler comes right back, takes possession. Burn at midfield with it for the Saints. Ball dumped in looking for Sandberg. Headed forward, but Flagler maintains possession. 
Lopez, her pass deflected, comes right back to the Saints. Ball dumped in, looking for Sanchez, played out by Wingate. It'll be a throw in for Flagler, deep in Wingate's half. Hannah Dolores with the throw in. As Flagler looking to add to its one goal lead. Up the line sent by Wingate, some space here. Is on the run for the Bulldogs is Brianna Dottillo. But it goes through the legs of Zanardi. Comes all the way back to Frail. Frail has to play with her feet with the beeb on the doorstep. Wingate showing possession here. Knocking some passes around, looking to get it forward. Does so, Zanardi has it at midfield. Now, ball played near side for DeLong. Cox looking for Zanardi. That's gonna go wide and Dubell will watch it go out for a goal kick. And that's the possession that you see that Wingate is capable of throughout the season, Dan. They've been a possession-minded team that wants to tilt that in their favor, look for the opening and attack rather than kind of what we saw from Flyver's first goal, that counter opportunity. Yeah, I feel like they're going to try and play sensible and try not to force things as they, get, they conceded early, so the game, the game is pretty much still there. It's not like the ch like a chase and a goal with a narrow lead. They've still got the majority of the game to still play. Cox with it for Wingate. Plays it back to DeLong. Now Vite. As they will bring it all the way back to the back line. Hendricks with a long ball now sent in. It's over the defense, but it hops once for the keeper, Dubell. And she'll pick it up pretty easily. We talked about it a little bit at the beginning. But with Dubell and Frail, these two goalkeepers, Frail was the first team region goalkeeper as voted on by the sports information directors. Dubell was second. And both of these goalkeepers ranked very highly in the national stats for goals against average and shutouts, both of them with double-digit shutouts this season. So any goal you know is going to be precious in this matchup between these two keepers. Wingate with it here, just shy of midfield. DeLong trying to get possession, but double team there, taken away by the Saints. Nowotny, that's deflected, but it ends up going into the box. Sandberg gives chase, but Frail is there. Pick it up, quick outlet by Frail, and that was dangerous there. As Flagler almost turned that high pressure into a chance. And a foul here, and they're going to call, or stop the clock here, as a foul against Wingate will give Flagler a free kick. Just past midfield. We are 15 minutes into the Southeast Region Championship match. The winner of this one faces Nova Southeastern on Sunday here at Saints Field, trying to earn a berth into the national semifinals, which will take place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sarah Carr with the free kick here. It's a low line drive, takes a deflection off the Saints. Popped back into the box, popped up in the air by Hendricks. And then finally, Sandberg just puts a toe to it. Looked like she was just trying to get it on frame and just came off the side of her foot. Yeah, it's, it's more of a stab effort, I feel like. So a goal kick for Wingate here. The Bulldogs. Again, we told you earlier, picked seventh in the South Atlantic Conference, but under interim head coach Jack Funden has put together a fantastic season. As there's another opportunity for Flagler. Frail out of her. 
net comes in and pounces on that ball a fraction of a second before Sandberg would have gotten there. And again, playing it out rather than playing it long. And that possession works here because Wingate has it up the left side. DeLong into the box. DeLong one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and a save by Dubell. With her legs, it goes out for a throw. And now you see why Wingate likes to play out of the back like that. They get that matchup they want. DeLong goes the really half the field with the ball, gets a shot and a good opportunity. But a first save for Dubell, and the throw-in goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, I feel like at that the angle was narrowing down and Sarah Lee is a big goalkeeper to try and get the ball past. So I feel like the chance was there, but it was well defended. Well, and that's an underrated ability for a collegiate goalkeeper is using your legs. You're just so used to blocking shots with your hands, with your body, that using your legs to stop a shot like that is really a smart play. Into the box it goes, but offsides is whistled against Wingate here. And it'll be a free kick coming for the Saints. Approaching the 20 minute mark of this match. Sanchez. Looking to send in, and that is a fantastic ball, but unfortunately, Habib was offsides, and I don't know about that call, Dan. That was pretty close. Yeah, it was pretty close, as you see. But as we saw, the, the chances are there now, so both ends in quick succession. Wingate on the attack, but Dottillo dispossessed, but then Wingate wins it right back. Krakauer into the top of the box. And the shot goes wide by Cox. Caitlin Cox had an opportunity. She was flush with the goal, but she had to rush the shot with Dubell charging hard out of her net. Dubell plays it wide, but it's gonna go out. A throw in coming for Wingate. Wingate now starting to gain confidence, and it really came from that shot by DeLong Dan as they've started to really take over possession lines. Stringing passes together. Hendricks to Cox. Cox makes the turn. Cox goes, plays it wide for DeLong. Edge of the box is DeLong. Left side. Crosses. It's in the box. Shot is wide. And that is going to be a goal kick, but it was another good look at goal by Wingate. This time, Jess LaFrancis with the turnaround shot. And you're seeing some space for Wingate with the three in the back here by Flagler. You're yeah. seeing some space in the middle. Yeah, the, th the three versus three at the moment causing problems for Flagler, I feel, with the three defenders and then Wingate's three attackers. Off the goal kick. Wingate again with it. But Flagler will be able to clear it to midfield. LaFrancis picks it up in the midfield for Wingate. Plays it back to Hendricks. And Hendricks will use her keeper. Frail is way out of her box. LaFrancis almost taken away by Nowatney, but she maintains possession. And that one deflected by Sanchez, but it goes out for a Wingate throw-in. 20 minutes gone in this one. Flagler leads 1-0 on the goal by Sandberg. And you look at those numbers, Dan, just amazing. When you look at the totals of Sandberg and Nowotny this season, Nowotny 20 assists, Sandberg 24 goals, as Nowotny has it on her foot right now. Tries to feed Sandberg, but it's clear by the Bulldogs. I mean, those are numbers you don't get often in college soccer men all women. Yeah, I've, well, obviously, as we've seen by their accolades, have been well rewarded for their hard work they've put in. Sandberg, the region player of the year by 
Kosida Nawadney, the Academic All-American of the Year, just announced yesterday. A four Division Two by Kosida. So not only Nawatney outstanding on the field, but also outstanding in the classroom as well. Yeah, just an all-around college athlete. Pass by Sanchez, just clipped by Hendricks, and now Wingate on the run. Ball into the box, deflected by the Saints, and then cleared. Up the far side, here come the Saints. And finally a foul will be whistled, and I believe we're going to get our first booking of the evening, and we do. And it is going to be the big center back for Wingate. Chandler Hendricks, who is going to be booked here. So a free kick coming for Flagler. But that was a great run by Byrne because she caught it. She got the ball well back in Flagler's half and wound through several Wingate players and then drew the foul, which really was an important foul because it looked like she would have been able to feed either Habib or Sandberg. Free kick headed wide by Flagler. And it'll be a goal kick for the Bulldogs. We do want to mention that Wingate's goalkeeper, Abby Frail, she was also a Coastside Academic All-American honoree this season. That was announced yesterday. As Nowatney has it here for the Saints, that's cleared by Wingate. DeLong has it hassled by Sanchez, plays it back. Francis to Hendricks, now ahead for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have numbers. Tenardi plays it wide, and that's going to be played out, and I believe it's going to be a corner kick, and it is. Krakauer will head over to take this corner kick for Wingate, second corner of the half. A couple of targets in the box for the Bulldogs. Again, Wingate looking for the equalizer. Krakauer sends it far post. Headed up in the air. And then a shot wide by DiBiase. Comes back out to the Bulldogs in the midfield. LaFrancis plays it wide for DeLong. DeLong. Gets some space, looking to get the cross in. Finally does so, but it's cleared by the Saints. And now Nowotny with it, a nice first touch. Now Nowotny on the run with the ball. Sandberg is the only target, and Hendricks makes a sliding stop, but I believe she was off sides, was Sandberg. On that play, Wingate restarts it quickly. One thing I noticed from the Bulldogs, they don't mess around. They want to get that ball going as soon as they can. We've seen that from goal kicks. We've seen it from restarts. And that feeds into their possession style. Yeah, I feel like they're just trying to catch the flag of Saints off guard, really. It's just as we've seen when they've played quickly, they've managed to get chances on goal. So clearly that's a game plan they've been taught to play with. The long turnaround shot doesn't have much on it. Easy play for Dubell, and she will punt it forward. 25 minutes gone, 20 left here in this first half. Nawadney in midfield. Plays it back, and now that will go wide looking for Habib. Now Byrne one on one, and Byrne's going to be whistled for the foul. Zanardi drew it for Wingate, and free kick for the Bulldogs. They play it back to Frail, and Frail will play it out for a throw-in, and we'll get our first substitution of the evening. Two substitutions for Flagler. Number 
Maria Castorino Mejica will come in as well as Bryn Wexler for the Saints. But on that last restart, Dan, we saw a better job by Flagler basically not giving any easy passes on that restart, forcing the pass all the way back to the keeper. Yeah, uh, the hard work, as we said before, for the Flagler Saints is something that Wingate's going to have to try to adjust with. Flagler looking to play that in, but DeLong will come back and get possession. And that will be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Carly Bite won that throw, and she will deliver the throw in here in front of the Flagler bench. But off the restart, off the throw in. Flagler has numbers. Sandberg pops it into Nowatney. Nowatney. And into the goal is the shot. Nowatney initially shot it. It was deflected. And then coming back and making the second goal of the match is Lorena Lopez. And the junior from Mexico City makes it 2 nothing. 18 and a half minutes left to go, and you couldn't have scripted a better start for the Saints here. And really, Flagler had to withstand a lot of possession because between the first goal and the second goal, Wingate dominated possession. Flagler kept trying to counter, and they finally got the counter opportunity they needed. Yeah, it's just, it's just about making them chances count, really. But... Obviously, the hard work from Flagler created the mistake, and then they won the ball back, and they played it forward, and resulted in a goal on the second attempt. And a rare misplay by Frail in goal. Been solid all year long, but that time she, you could tell she was a little indecisive on whether she wanted to go hard and play it with her body or try and wait for it to come into the box as a whistle and a foul whistled against Wingate. We'll give a free kick to Flagler. Make it count, ladies! Go white! The first goal, Dan, was really just great give and go between Nowatney and Sandberg. But what we saw in the first match today in the South Regional, a, a rare goalkeeper error leading. And in this tournament, any mistake is deadly. Yep. Ball popped in wide. I believe that was Sanchez. It goes out for a goal kick, but now a lot of work for Wingate to do to try and claw back into this match. We've seen glimpses. We've seen chances. They just haven't been able to convert. And we'll see if they still want to play this out of the back. And this time, Frail sends it forward, headed by Flagler. Nowatney has it, pops it in, looking, and again, a ball sent high and wide for a goal kick. Flagler lobbying for a corner kick, thinking there was a deflection. I think it was Habib over there lobbying for that corner, but instead it's a goal kick played out of the back by Wingate. And then one at midfield. Now they're going to say it is a throw-in for the Bulldogs in front of Wingate's bench. Oh, now they're going to say it was a foul, or is it offside? I think they're calling it a foul. Okay, so a foul against Flagler. Free kick for Wingate. Cox gets the first touch. But Lopez comes away with it. And she's dispossessed by LaFrancis. LaFrancis plays it wide. Zanardi. Back to LaFrancis. And a foul against the Saints will give a free kick to Wingett. We approach the 30-minute mark of this match. Starting to get a little bit of tempers flaring yeah. between the 
players and the benches, not anything out of control, but just Wingate sensing the desperation to try and pull one back before we get to halftime. As that ball played forward by the Saints, a long run for Wingate and pressure again by the Saints, a throw in for Wingate. But the Saints not conceding anything right now. They are challenging and pressuring every touch of the ball by the Bulldogs. Yeah, just with Wingate not wanting to have to play the hard working game really. It's just who can get to the ball quickest. And we have a substitution coming in for Wingate. It's the first substitution in the match for the Bulldogs. Number seven, Alicia Rubio Garcia. A sophomore from Spain will come in. Immediately on the ball here. Gives it off to Krakauer. Now LaFrancis at midfield. Plays it back to Hendricks. Hendricks to Zanardi. And now all the way back to Frail. You definitely see collegiately a lot of teams hesitant to play it all the way back. Wingate not afraid to do that as offsides the whistle against Flagler here. And they will play it quickly off the restart again. DeLong having now switched to the right side of the field to LaFrancis. Now Krakauer with it. And a shot high and wide by the substitution Garcia. It will be a free kick for the Saints. And that's a shot that maybe Garcia could have taken a little more time with because she looks like she had some space. As that's headed out by the Saints. Throw in coming for Winget. Fight to LaFrancis. LaFrancis' pass back didn't have much on it. Frail will pick it up and play it wide. Headed forward by the Saints. Picked back up by the Bulldogs. And that's off of Flagler. It'll be a throw in on the far side. But then that's off the foot of Zanardi out for a Flagler throw in. 13 minutes and change to go until halftime. Flagler with a 2 nothing lead looking to stay unbeaten on the season and capture a first NCAA Southeast Region Championship. Francis, back to Hendricks, back to Frail. The ball finds Garcia. She can't keep possession. Lopez gets a toe to that one for Flagler. And now a nice ball looking in for Habib. Cross goes into Sandberg, who finishes for the goal. Saints. And that was a clinical finish by Sandberg off the cross from Habib. Yeah, it's just where you want the ball really as a striker. Right between the six yard box and the penalty area for you to attack. And Sarah attacked that space and was rewarded with the goal. But not taking it away, the great ball in from Annie Habib found the foot. So Sandberg now with 25 goals on the season. Two in the first half here. And it was 3-0 Flagler. We do have a sub for the Bulldogs. Wingate will bring in Cat Stockford, a junior from Columbia, Maryland. We've had a sub for Flagler as well. We've had number 10, Sarah Sandberg, replaced by number 14, Liz Hall. So subs for both teams here as Wingate now really backs against the wall here, down three goals within the first 33 minutes of action as that ball comes into the box. But again, Dubell 
a quick off her line comes up and smothers that ball. Yeah, as we, as we were commentating in the last game, we didn't really see the keepers commanding the area well, but these two goalkeepers so far have commanded their area very well. Yeah, there was absolutely nothing Frail could have done on that last yeah. ball by Sandberg. You know, that's just a world-class finish from an All-American candidate. Dubell out of her box, plays this one forward, but only as far as Veit. Veit to Krakauer. That's played out. We're seeing a switch here from Wingate. Krakauer started the first half on the right side. Now has moved to the left as DeLong has moved to the right side. And that will be subs again. This time, Flagler will bring a, bring a pair of subs into the contest. Number 24, Gabby Flores. Number 11, Addie Foster will check in. As Flagler has a throw in here. Sent forward, headed by Wingate. And then settled by the back line of Flagler. Played back to DeBell. And then her ball finds Liz Hall. And now over to Gabby Flores on the left side. Flores will give up a goal kick. Goal kick coming. So a brand new front line here for Flagler for the last 10 minutes of this first half. With Mejica Hall and Flores. Flores with her pass taken away, but then won right back by Foster. And a little bit of miscommunication there in the midfield for Flagler. So Wingate comes away with it. That was a point where Stockford just tried to do a little too much with it. But Wingate does end up drawing the foul. And a free kick at midfield for the Bulldogs. Hendricks will restart it quickly. But won by the Saints. Under 10 to play here in the first half. Mojica with some nice footwork there, but dispossessed. Comes all the way back to the back line for the Saints. Foster tracks back, wins it, plays it back. And then her ball sent forward for Hall, headed by Hendricks. Still with the Saints here in Wingate's half. And then that ball played forward by the back line to midfield, but tracked back and won by the Saints. And a throw in for Wingate, far side of the field. Zanardi with it, up the right side. And then it will go out for a throw in. Stay high, Liz. Garcia with it for the gate, plays it back, and then won by the Saints in the midfield. whistle and it will be a foul against Wingate, or excuse me, against Flagler. It was a battle there between Garcia and Foster, but Foster ends up getting whistled for the foul. It will be a free kick for Wingate. Stay with your second ball, too. First and second. Step hard, sir. Sent far post, headed on to goal, and it's in. The header off the header, and Wingate gets one back. Brianna Dottillo 
and scores off of the header. The free kick to DiBiase was headed on goal, and it was just Dottillo out jumping Dubell to get her head on that ball and put it in. Yeah, I feel I feel like at least Dubell should have commanded the ball because in this game at the moment, keepers get a lot of leniency towards him. There's an obstruction, so maybe she could have just took that route a bit. But a badly needed goal for the Bulldogs because now with seven minutes to go, it is now 3-1 and a two-goal lead, not as daunting as a three-goal lead. Looking at going into halftime as that ball is played out for a Flagler throw-in near the Wingate bench. Nifty moves by Mojica. Her cross played away, but then Mojica comes back, and I think they're going to call her for a high boot there, a foul against Flagler, and a free kick for the Bulldogs. 3-1, all kinds of action here in this first half of the Southeast Region Championship match. Flagler, the top seed, out to that three-goal lead, but Wingate gets one back. That is played out. It'll be a Wingate throw in far side of the field. Throw in comes into LaFrancis. Now Hendricks plays it out. Again, good pressure by the Saints. And well, they say it gets a touch off of the Saints defender. So a throw in for Wingate. Flagler with it in the midfield. Mahika taken off the ball by Veit. Veit up the left side now. Looking to cut it across, does so. But a nice job defensively by the Saints to break up that attack. It is still with Wingate here. Tillo, the goal scorer, gives it to LaFrancis. LaFrancis, long ball looking into the box, but it's going to fly over the head and out for a goal kick. Another sub coming in with under five to play in the first half. Lauren Lannon will check in for Flagler. Dubell gets set to deliver the goal kick. Now we kept in by Flores. Played forward. Looking for Wexler, but taken by the Bulldogs. Krakauer. Trying to pick out a target, plays it back to Hendricks. Hendricks up the middle for Garcia. Now Zanardi has it. Zanardi plays it wide. Tries to get it back, but the Saints come away with it. And that's a turnover. Krakauer has it, edge of the box. Her shot had a little bit of pace on it. It was ticketed for the upper 90, the upper near post corner, but it was just wide, and it will be a goal kick. And Krakauer, after that crack, will take a seat on the bench, and we'll get a substitution for the Bulldogs as Kat McCollum will check in. Wingate still with possession. They found one before the half. Can they find two? Dottillo into the box, but right up the middle and easy save for Dubell. Now Flagler looking to play it forward quickly. Lopez wide, and that's going to be a foul, and that should be a card. And it is. 
and Hendricks is her second yellow, and Hendricks is shown a red, and Wingate will play with 10 for the rest of this match, as there was no doubt about that being a yellow when it was her second yellow of the match. Yeah, it's just sometimes when you're playing that yellow card, I think it's down to the coach's responsibility as well as the players, just to tell them to calm down or maybe change them as we saw in the previous game. But it was a good turn, a good bit of play from Flagler. And just that space that was created was exploited by Castorina Mukia. Well, all the momentum that Wingate had gained with that goal they got back after going down 3-0 has now evaporated because Wingate is now going to have to, and for a possession team, to try and play a man down makes it an even tougher task in the second half. Yeah, when you go a man down, it's like everyone has to work that a little bit extra to make up, and obviously... As we've seen, the early goals from Flagler made them have to work even harder. Free kick, line drive, in, and that is in for the goal. I don't think it touched anybody. That is directly in off the free kick, and Flagler now leads it 4-1, 239 to go. And that is Maria Castorino Mujica with the goal off the free kick. Mejica's sixth goal of the year. A dramatic turn of events in the space of just a few moments here at Saints Field as Flagler now leads 4-1 and is playing a man up for a half plus two minutes here in the Southeast Region Championship match. Zanardi with it for Wingett. To LaFrancis, now Veit has it. Flagler will clean that up. Stockford had it, now Wingate still with possession. Zanardi in for Garcia, but Dubell off the line will smother it with under two to play in the half. After the goal kick, Wingate with possession. Garcia to LaFrancis. LaFrancis tries to leave it off to Zanardi, does so, her shot initially bobbled by Dubell, but there was no Wingate players in the area, and so she'll punt it forward. And a foul, a little push in the back there by the Saints will give Wingate the free kick. As we approach the one minute mark. Wingate with it, Zanardi. Another long range shot, but another easy save by Dubell. Now you see a little bit of the frustration from the Bulldogs building as they've tried a couple from distance that really, Dan had no chance to beat Dubell. Yeah, I feel like Wingate's turned from shots from distance just because the back line, the flag is playing quite high, so it's. Mejica, diagonal ball. Looking for Lopez, her cross, deflected, shot, deflected. Stays in play, and with 20 seconds left, Wingate has one last chance. Garcia tries to lay it off to LaFrancis, but it's gonna be taken away by Flagler. As that will go out, that is how our first half ends, but what a first half for the top-seeded and host Saints, leading it 4-1, to one and will play the entire second half with a man advantage after Hendricks was shown a red for two yellows here in the first half. Well, we will break for halftime and come back with a look at the first half stats and bring you the second half of action here in this NCAA Southeast Region Championship match from St. Augustine.
Chad Jackson with Dan McGuire back with you here at Saints Field as halftime here in the Southeast Region Championship match. And Flagler College holds a 4-1 lead on Wingate. Here's a look at the first half statistics. Wingate, Dan, actually had more shots than Flagler, 9-8, but four saves from Sarah Lisa Dubell in goal for Flagler, whereas Abby Frail for Wingate did not make a save there in that first half. Wingate had two corner kicks. There were eight fouls whistled on Flagler, six on Wingate. Flagler was offsides twice, but really the big story was Flagler taking advantage of their opportunities, scoring four goals on eight shots. Anytime you can get that kind of efficiency, you're going to have success. Yeah, I just feel like obviously the early goal sort of set the standard for the game, really. But Wingate come, did well to come back, but I feel like the red card decision so we're going to have an influence on this game and for the second half. So again, Wingate will be playing with just 10 players as for the Bulldogs, it was Chandler Hendricks. Her first yellow, her first booking was in the 22nd minute, but her second booking came in the 43rd minute and on the resulting free kick, Mahika scored off the free kick that turned a 3-1 match where Wingate had gotten a little bit of momentum back into a 4-1 lead for Flagler here at half. And again, that man advantage for presumably the rest of this match. Teams will switch sides here. Flagler will now be going from right to left on your screen. Wingate from left to right. And for Flagler, Dan, knowing you have a lead, knowing you have a man advantage, what do you think was the message to the team at halftime? Um, just go out and play the way you did this first half and just keep doing what they're doing, really. But obviously, coach actually having high expectations, so he'll just want the players to play how they were and keep the normal game and try, try new things maybe as the game goes on. And for Wingate, staring at a big disadvantage, or sparing at a big deficit, also down a player. What's your strategy to just kind of get, try and get that first goal within the first 10 or 15 minutes here? Um, I'll be like, play, play for, try and get an early goal, but play for pride and let the pride win the game, really. So off the, or the beginning of the second half, Flagler with possession as a ball in the corner. Saved from going out? No, can't save it from going out. To the Saints, it'll be a goal kick for Wingate. It'll be interesting to see if Wingate continues, and it looks like they will play out of the back off of restarts. And immediately, a turnover and possession for Flagler will end up being a throw-in for Flagler. Yeah, I feel like Flagler's switch on to that quick goal kick routine now. So let's see what Wingate can do. Burns says it's into the box and a volley goes over the net. As that was number seven, Nowatney, trying to get on the scoreboard. She has an assist tonight. But the goal scorers for... Flagler, Sarah Sandberg with two, Bryn Wexler with one, and Mejica with one. The goal scorer for Wingate, Brianna Dottillo. As Wingate has possession here. LaFrancis across midfield. Ball played in looking for Cox. And that is going to be a throw in for the Saints on the far side of the field. Well, it's also an interesting dilemma because you have a team in Wingate which likes to possess. Down three goals, you have a team that likes to go forward, go direct. Holding on to the league, you don't want to try and turn into a possession team because you're doing something unfamiliar to what you've been coached to do. Yeah, like I said, Coach Martin would just say, play how you like how the beam player. I let the game take control, really. But that ball 
deflected out by the Saints. Throw in for Wingate on the far side of the field. Wingate, by the way, in other regional action, they are actually hosting the NCAA Southeast Volleyball Regional taking place right now. As that ball gathered and played forward out for a throw in. Flagler and Wingate are actually in action in that volleyball regional saw during halftime that Flagler's volleyball team fell to Carson Newman in that regional, but Flagler, a yearly participant in the volleyball regional in the southeast, have hosted it on a couple of occasions. Wingate with it here, looking to play it forward, but it'll be settled by the three-person back line of the Saints. Played back to DeBell, the keeper. Again, DeBell with four saves in that first half, but mostly on shots from distance by the Bulldogs. This one goes all the way back to Frail. Now the Bulldogs with it, looking to advance. Good step! DiBiase up the left side, now settled by LaFrancis. Looking wide for DeLong. DeLong has it. Gives it off to Williamson. Then DeLong to Zanardi. Zanardi to Cox. Cox surrounded by Saints and eventually taken off the ball by Flagler. And now here comes the Saints attack. Nowatney ahead to Mejica. Mejica into the box. But that'll be cleared by the Bulldogs. Up ahead to LaFrancis. Over. To Krakauer. Krakauer waiting for support. Gets it as it's played wide. And that cross will go out for a corner kick. So Wingate, which had the only Two corner kicks of the first half. We'll have the first of the second half. And it'll be Morgan Zanardi to deliver this corner kick. Again with a man down. Wingate wants to get numbers in the box, but they have to be careful about the counter. It's off the hands of Dubell, and she finally juggles it to herself over the head of one of the Wingate players, and we have a player down for Wingate, or excuse me, for Flagler, so the clock is stopped here. We're five minutes into our second half, and a player down for the Saints. I didn't see what happened. Um, it was a coming together, really, just... Sarah Lisa doing what a keeper should do, command the area, and obviously just sometimes you have to take your own team out in order to get the ball, and I think that's just what's happened there. So a collision with collided. DeBell. But obviously Sarah Lisa DeBell is not really a keeper you want to collide with. <laughs> yeah, and so we will get, I believe, a substitution here. So Annie Habib is going to check in for the Saints for the injured player. Chloe Bryn out of the game, but walking under her own power. It's a good sign, as that is going to be a throw-in for Wingate as we restart here in the second half of the Southeast Region Championship match. And again, Flagler holding a 4-1 lead. Throw-in for the Saints in front of the Wingate bench. Wingate wins the throw-in. DeLong. Back to Williamson. Now to Tillo through the midfield, but then her pass is behind Cox. Flagler now on the attack. Watney 
taken off the ball there by the Bulldogs. Long ball sent forward. DeLong in a foot race with Sarah Carr. And Carr will get to it first and watch it go out for a goal kick. Again, the winner of this match faces Nova Southeastern, the South Region champions, who defeated Embry-Riddle 2-1 earlier today. And the NCAA National Quarterfinal will take place here at Saints Field on Sunday. Between the Sharks and, again, the winner of this one. Carr heads it forward and a foul against Cox will give Flagler a free kick. The bracket, by the way, has the winner of this national quarterfinal that will take place on Sunday. The quarterfinal between the South and Southeast region will take on the winner of the South Central West region quarterfinal. And that will take place in Pittsburgh as Flagler has it on the right side. Cross will hit the side of the net. That will be a goal kick for Wingate. Habib with it on the left side. Tries to keep it in, can't do so. There'll be a throw in for Wingate. Lopez backwards to Carr, who plays it back to Dubell for Flagler. She'll send it up to Nawatney at midfield. One touch. One by Wingate. Now LaFrancis has it for Wingate. Taking off the ball there. One by the Saints. Nawatney. Searching for Liz Hall, but it comes all the way back to Dolores. Now Habib, she'll take a shot, takes a deflection off the Bulldogs, comes back to Habib, she'll play it wide. Now Nawatney with it. Nawatney will send it into the box. And that's a fantastic diving grab by Frail. Because there were two Flagler players on the doorstep waiting to get on the end of that ball. And Frail was able to make the play. Long ball from Frail comes back looking for Cox, but played back to Dubell by the Saints. Ten minutes into our second half. Again, Flagler continues to lead at 4-1 and continues to play with a man advantage. Dottillo. Back to DiBiase. Now ahead. Looking for Cox. Cox gets on a hold of it. Krakauer. Back to DiBiase. DiBiase trying to pick out a target. Ends up taking it herself to the edge of the box. Slots it in and it's cleared away by the Saints. All the way up to Paul and then a foul. On Wingate, and this will give Flagler a free kick. And we could have another booking here on the Bulldogs, and it is. So Brianna Dottillo, the goal scorer, enters the stat sheet with a booking, and a free kick coming for Flagler. Hey, if it hurts, that's the mail 
But again, that was a situation, Dan, where if she doesn't commit that foul, it could be 5-1. Yeah, as I say, it's a professional foul. You take one for the team just to prevent the attack, and she's obviously stepped up to that plate and took it. Free kick headed by Wingett. And cleared out, looking for Cox. And that is a dangerous challenge by Cox, but they say she won it, so play continues here. Watch your back ball, four and two. Momentarily won by Flagler, but sent ahead. It's going to be a goal kick. And we'll get a sub here. Come back up the field. And a good sign for Wingate, or excuse me, for Flagler as Chloe Byrne will come back in. She was the player down in the goal box for the Saints a few moments ago. So she is back in. Frail plays it short again, and again, Flagler pressuring will win a throw in. Lauren Lannon with the throw in here for Flagler. Into the box it goes, cleared away by the Bulldogs. Well, Francis to Zanardi. Now it's a long. Trying to get it on the overlap to Williamson, but it's cleared out for a Wingate throw in. DeLong for Cox. Back to DeLong. DeLong. Not finding much room. Lays it back to Williamson and then a little miscommunication thought Cox was going to break to the outside and the ball just trickles in to DeBell. DeBell's punt. Headed forward by Williamson. And settled by the Saints. Long ball looking in and off sides is Liz Hall. Frail was out of her box looking to make a play on that ball, which prompted the early whistle from the assistant referee. Double down. Yeah, well done. That free kick goes out. Throw in for Flagler. Sonardi hey. to LaFrancis. Reverses direction. Now feeds it back to Zanardi. Plays it wide for DeLong. DeLong, edge of the box. Tries to... Tries to nutmeg Lannon, but Lannon would have nothing of it. And it will be a throw in for the Bulldogs. And Cox will give up a goal kick. 60th minute of action here at Saints Field. And Flagler comfortably ahead 4-1 as Wingate tries to find a way to generate some offense, a player down here. Trying a little high pressure, but Flagler gets away with it. And up the left side comes Mejica. And Mejica looking for some support. Cuts it back. Comes into the box with it, but a nice job defensively by the Bulldogs. Their clearance, though, only comes out as far as Lopez. And her ball is just Lopez's ball was deflected wide. But I believe they're going to whistle off sides on Liz Hall. It was a beautiful first touch from Hall that inched just past the near post. But the offsides whistle gives a free kick to the Bulldogs. Habib will check back into 
the lineup for Flagler replacing Nowatney. And off the goal kick, a throw in for the Bulldogs. And that is off the head of DeLong out for a Flagler throw in. Into the box it goes, and again, some indecision between the Wingate defenders. Frail has to come out and punch that ball away, where it should have been just an easy clearance. And a throw in for Flagler. And I think, Dan, you're starting to see the cumulative effect of being a player down because of there's not the openings that we saw from Wingate trying to pick out passes in the first half. There's just a man on everybody for Flagler. Yeah, I feel like that Wingate's starting to tire being a man down. Into the box, Mahika will try a hard angle shot, but we're going to stop the clock here as a foul is called. And I believe it is going to be a penalty kick for Flagler here as Habib, who was the one fouled inside the box, is at the spot to presumably take this penalty kick. He's going to take the next few. Score you. Stop management. I know. So a penalty kick for Flagler here with 28 minutes and 23 seconds left. Any Habib scores as she strikes it brilliantly. It's in the upper half, and it makes it 5-1 Flagler. For Habib, that's her 15th goal of the season. And when you get tired, when you get, when you're chasing the ball, when you're chasing a game, you'll see fouls like that happen. We saw the card on the one breakaway chance. We see a foul in the box that results in a penalty kick. When you get tired, you start fouling. Yeah, it's just when you get tired, mistakes get made. And this is where Flagler's obviously capitalized with this goal, but it's just see how many more they can get. But it's whether or not Wingate are gonna be able to withstand the hard work, the constant press. And the other situation, too, is Wingate, not a deep team. They only subbed three players in that first half. And they haven't subbed anyone here in the second half, and that's asking a lot of your players. And it's probably the way they've played most of the year. When you play possession, you want your players who are comfortable on the field, comfortable with the ball, to be the ones on the field in the, in the moments that count. But this is just a very, very tall task asking the Bulldogs to claw their way back into this one. Down 5-1 and down a player here in this championship match. Zanardi had a foot on it briefly, cleared away by the Saints, out off of the Bulldogs. It will be a throw in for Flagler on the far side of the field. And it looks like we are gonna get a multitude of subs here for Wingate coming up to the spot. At least four that I saw coming from the Bulldogs bench. Well, and this is an opportunity too for Wingate to start to get some players some experience. You know, you've, you're in the NCAA championship. You've got players who maybe haven't seen that much experience in a tournament situation. Going to be able to get some minutes here. They tried to get the subs in, but play continues here. Habib with it. Has a couple of targets here. Habib takes it herself, cuts it across to Mejica. Mejica one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and a fantastic save by Frail. That was a reflex save with the right arm of Frail to keep Flagler off the scoreboard. It is going to be a corner kick, but that's really the first kind of reflex 
save we've seen from an all-region keeper in Frail, and we will get substitutions for both teams. It'll be Kat McCollum, Carly Olson, Morgan Gray coming in for Wingate. Corner kick coming for Flagler. Sent in near post, and Frail is right there to pick it off. At midfield, Williamson with it for Wingate. But taking off the ball there, Mahika has it for Flagler. Now wide for Byrne. Byrne, ball deflected, comes back out to Byrne. Byrne now wide. Mahika back to Lannon. Now Mahika into the box, it goes, it's headed, and another fantastic save by Frail. And then she'll outlet it quickly. That's two saves from Frail over the last three or four minutes that have been fantastic. Now Mahika looking to get it ahead, deflected. Wexler to Mahika. Make a diagonal ball into the box, but cleared by the Bulldogs and out for a Flagler throw. And the subs coming in for both teams for Flagler. Number two, Allie Ritter for Wingate. Number 22, Jessica Capes. That ball will hop and go out for a Wingate, or excuse me, a Flagler throw. Habib plays it across, but that's intercepted by the Bulldogs. Krakauer backwards played to Frail. And now Wingate on the attack as a foul against Flagler. That's against Matei, and it will give the Bulldogs a free kick. Again, 5-1 is our score. Flagler with the lead. Nice job. Nice job. Approaching the 70-minute mark of this match, and it will be Morgan Gray on the ball here for the Bulldogs. Gray, a six-foot freshman from Broomfield, Colorado. Sends it straight up the middle, and that hops across the box, comes back out to the Bulldogs. Cape sent it into the box. It came back out, and it will be a throw-in for Flagler in front of the winget bench. Bell sends it forward. Habib with the head to it. Come back to the Saints. And now settled by the Bulldogs. Just shy of midfield. Habib, when it comes back, wins possession. And a foul against the Bulldogs on Habib. We'll give the Saints a free kick. Again, 
Ben Flagler in its third consecutive NCAA Regionals appearance. As that free kick is headed away, but comes back out to the Saints. Lopez tries to pop it wide, headed forward by the Bulldogs. The Saints were 2-2 two and two in regional play in 2017-2018 combined. 2-0 and oh here in this regional as we have more subs entering the contest. Josephine Nielsen and Conchi Sanchez back in for Flagler. For Wingate, Natalie Chornak is into the contest now as that ball played out by the Bulldogs. Flagler throw in. But this is the type of a regional final score, Dan, that will raise eyebrows across the nation because when you get to this spot, and we saw it in the South Region Championship, you expect a tight game, a one-goal game, maybe a game that goes to overtime and penalty kicks. This has been impressive by the Saints, and the other teams around the other regions are going to notice when a team beats a team by this score in a region final. Yeah, I feel like the amount of goals that are scored, it makes you sort of the team to beat, as I say, so... But fair play to flag left, they've clearly deserved this. Mahika off balance shot, settled by Frail, quickly outletted. One thing we didn't really mention in the pregame is that Flagler, when you look at the national statistics, total goals, scoring offense, assists, points, they are second in the country in many of those categories. But they're all second to the same team, Grand Valley State. And Grand Valley State, if you want to talk about Division II women's soccer and a dynasty, that's the one school that keeps coming up when you talk about dominance in women's soccer. That's the target for Flagler and for head coach Ashley Martin. That is where he wants this program to get to. He wants to be another Grand Valley State here in the Southeast. Yeah, he's, he's got his model that he wants to achieve and he's got his targets of what he wants to do. So there's no reason why they can't do it. Corner kick coming from the Bulldogs here. Fourth corner of the match, second in this half. And it will be picked off easily by Dubell. And then a quick outlet looking for Mejica. Again, it's two forwards for the Saints against two defenders for Wingate. But a nice job by the Bulldogs to corral that. And keep possession. Jessica Capes, one of those two last defenders able to get possession. As we are under 20 to play, 73rd minute of action here at Saints Field. Throw in coming for Flagler on the far side. And again, the winner of this match faces Nova Southeastern. 2-1 winners over Embry-Riddle earlier today in the national quarterfinal. Wingate with it, Gray with a long ball. But a nice defensive effort there by Matei to just safely play it out for the throw in. Let, let Josie know she can't let him out that easy. Better pressure, better pressure. Wingate with a cross into the box. And again, Dubell is right there to pounce on it and pick off that cross deftly. Throw in for Wingate. Shopping up, shopping up, up. Near side. And Mahika off the turnover has it and then is fouled. And that is going to be at least a yellow. It could be a red. It is just a yellow. And it is a red because that's her second yellow of the match. And it is now 11 v 9. As Brianna Dottillo, who picked up her first yellow earlier in this half, is shown yellow and then shown red, she will exit. 
with 16 minutes and 46 seconds left in this match. And Flagler leading at 5-1. Dan, I'm not sure if I've seen that in collegiate soccer. 11 v 9. I've seen 10 v 9, but I have not seen 11 v 9. Yeah, it's first time for me as well. So, <laughs> but as we said, this to tournament's full of surprises. And the shot is saved by Frail. It was a nice idea by Mejica to try to the right side. It's where she scored the first goal in the first half, going to the right. And the thing is, it's not as if either of the Reds were on one fluky play. It was accumulation. It was two yellows, four solid fouls, where it really was the correct call in each instance, resulting in the bookings and the ejections. Mejica with it. But dispossessed by Gray. Gray before the Bulldogs gets it ahead. That was McCollum trying to cross it to her teammate. Ball ping pongs off of a Flagler player. Throw in for Wingate, far side of the field. 5 1 our score. And again, Flagler playing with a two-man advantage and a foul against the Saints will give Wingate a chance here as this is pretty close to goal and a chance for maybe the Bulldogs to pull one back. Gray on the ball for the Bulldogs. Morgan Gray sends it near post, and Dubell right there to pick it off. Under 15 to play in this Southeast Region Championship match. Everything simple. Press it, Bray. Press guns. Winget with possession. Mejica gets a touch to that, but. Wingate maintains possession. Frail sends it forward. Looking for McCollum. McCollum will settle it. But she is immediately surrounded by a couple of Saints players. And the Saints will win a throw in. As we will have a substitution and a goalkeeper change here for Flagler. As Sarah Lee Dubell will exit. And Nadia Fung, a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, will come in. And a nice hand for Dubell, who was really fantastic tonight, Dan. Yep. Did extremely well. Commanded that area well. And kept the game and kept the team in the game, really, just from them few chances that Wingate's had. Four first half saves for Dubell when Wingate was searching for first the equalizer and then to pull one or two back before we got to halftime. There's a long ball from Wingate, shielded off well by the Saints. Played forward, and now Flagler with it. Good bit of one-touch passing, but the last touch just goes awry, and it'll be a throw-in for the Bulldogs. Flagler again pressuring, not conceding anything, wins possession. Mejica to the top of the box, cleared away. But only as far as Lopez who has it. Now Hall keeps her footing, tries to keep it from going out, but it Trickles out of bounds for a Wingate throw. Cross to the far post. 
Mejica runs it down. She'll have to bring it out of the box and gather. Nifty move to keep possession and get some space. And now it's just a clinic as she sends it towards the box. And it's in for the goal. One a touch shot is in. And it is now six to one. Liz Hall on the scoreboard. But it really, that goal created by the work by Mejica here on the left side. Yeah, tremendous footwork by Mejica. Just turn the defender inside out. Just shift of weight, then go straight back. And she's known for doing that. And it's worked again. So Mejica adds an assist to her tally tonight. She had a first half goal off of a free kick. And it is now 6-1 to one with 12 minutes remaining in this match. We also want to remind you to continue watching after the conclusion of this game as we will have the trophy presentation ceremony for the Southeast region as it looks like the goalkeeper, Fung, is injured. She came out to try and play the ball with her feet and ended up either tweaking something or twisting something because she immediately signaled for the sideline, the bench area, and she is now being attended to. And again, she came in just moments ago for Sarah Lisa Dubell. But I'm not sure if we'll see Dubell or if we may see Madison North come in, a freshman from Milton, Vermont. As Fung being attended to at the edge of the box. 11.38 remaining here at Saints Field. 6-1 our score. It was 4-1 at halftime. A first half red card shown to Wingate's Hendricks made it 11 v 10 and then here in the second half two goals a penalty kick goal and then just moments ago a fantastic finish by Liz Hall off the cross by Mejica and it looks like Fung is having to be assisted off the field and so we will get a goalkeeper substitution here for the Saints and that's a tough break, Dan. You come in, you get your moment, come in an NCAA tournament, you know, play a few minutes, make a couple of plays, but suffering that injury early. Yeah. It sort of puts a downer on your night, but as a team, you've got to respect everyone else that's been there. But we've had two goalkeeper substitutions. And it is the freshman, Madison North, coming in. to take the place of Fung. Unfortunately, we just hope it's nothing serious. And like you said, really the only down moment for Flagler here this evening and what has otherwise been you know, a pretty successful match for the home crowd here. And you heard the, you heard the ovation from the crowd when she came in, again, from nearby Jacksonville. South side of Jacksonville, Mandarin High School product is about 20 minutes away from here. But it'll be a throw in for Wingate, and they will just simply throw it in, and it will be a goal kick. For Flagler, and we have a substitution for Flagler. Addie Foster will check in now. as she will replace Lorena Lopez. As we are back underway here. Wingate with possession on the back line, but again being pressured and a turnover there. 
cleared away, but only to midfield. Saints still with it. Now Wingate will try and bring it away. Service by McCollum goes all the way back to North, the new goalkeeper, and she'll pick it up. Smart play, waste some time, play it with your feet, and then pick it up when pressured. Now she'll punt it forward. And a foul as it was the substitution Foster playing it on the ground. Whistled for the foul, free kick coming for the Bulldogs. Ten minutes left in this one, which has been all Flagler in the Southeast Region Championship match. Straight up the middle goes the free kick, and North comes in and makes a nice play. And that's something when you come in as a sub, that's you want to get a first touch of the ball, whether it be a field player getting a pass, being able to deliver, or a goalkeeper getting a first chance. Yeah, just I feel like collecting the ball from the air gives the goalkeeper a bit more confidence when coming into a game. So Madison did well. Wingate with it here in midfield. Play it back. Gray taken off the ball there by the Saints. Long ball sent forward. Hall on the run here, trying to get a second goal, but Frail off her line will smother it. We've seen here within the last maybe 15 minutes, Dan, the Frail that we expected to see at the outset of this game, the all-region keeper, first-team all-region. We've seen her be more aggressive. I'm not sure much had changed, would change in the first half with some of the goals scored by Flagler, but it's nice to see her kind of shake off the rough first half and really play to the level that we expected her to play here in the second. Yeah, I feel like with Wingate being down to nine men, sort of Flagler's finding it easy to play through. So it's sort of last line of defense, and she has to stay big and step up to the role of trying to keep the score to a minimum. Flagler will play it back to North. North being pressured. Sends it forward. Now that ball popped in on the right side. Flagler with a chance here. 101 with the keeper and the goal is in and Flagler will make it 7-1. And Josephine Nilsson gets in the stat sheet. And that was just one-on-one -on -one power against power as Nielsen beats Frail with 7.59 left in the second half here. I feel like I keep wanting to say each of these second half goals is an exclamation point, but we're getting more exclamation points as we go along. Yeah, it's, it's more for the other teams as obviously Flagler progresses now, so just... Flagler seems like the team to beat at the moment. And certainly, you got to think Nova Southeastern watching this display will take notice at the effort put up by the Saints here in the Southeast Region Championship. And again, these two teams, Flagler out of the South, Nova Southeastern out of the, or excuse me, Flagler out of the Southeast, Nova Southeastern out of the South, both searching for their first region championships now searching for a semifinals appearance it has been a while since a team from the Sunshine State Conference has made the national semifinals it has also been a little while since Columbus out of the southeast as there's a toe poke and a shot just wide by Allie Ritter Ritter was fortunate it came right to her foot so she just ref uh, reflex volleyed it it was just wide yeah a bit of a fortunate bounce there but Ali Ritter was unlucky but it was more of a reflex kick than a composed I know what to do the last time there was a Sunshine State Conference team winning the 
South, South region. It was Barry in 2015. Of course, Columbus State, prior to this season, Southeast region champions four out of the last five years. And before that, you had Armstrong State as the Southeast region champions. Two straight years, 2011-2012. I had to get that mention in. As we have a throw in for Flagler near side, six minutes remaining. Here in this Southeast region championship match. Ball headed forward by Mexico, but it will go out. It'll be a Wingate throw in now. So which team will represent the South Southeast in the national semifinals? Will it be Nova Southeastern, who had not won an NCAA region match until this year, where they have now reeled off three straight? Or will it be Flagler, who is putting up a season for the ages, still undefeated, as that foul will go against Wingate and give the Saints a free kick? Now 22-0-1. How far, Dan, can this team go? Um, I feel like they can go all the way. They're just They've got the full support of every athletic team at Flagler. So I feel like they can go all the way. They've got a great team this year. So well, One thing, when you get into a tournament situation and you're looking, you know, you're nitpicking at which team is better than which, the first thing that a lot of commentators and a lot of people like to look at is star power. You know, do you have the stars? And with Sandberg, with Nowatney, with what we've seen from Mejica and Dubell tonight, it's clear that Flagler has the star power. Yeah. That totally. you need in big, you know, big time players make big time plays in big time games, and we've seen it tonight on display throughout this contest. Yeah, it's like all the star players, like they've stepped up to the mark of the occasion, and they've played like they have all season, and that's what you need to be successful. But it is a very, very hard thing to win a national championship, no matter what sport it is. And the first thing, first thing you can do is put yourself in that position. And right now, Flagler has done that. They hosted the regional last weekend. They've hosted now the Southeast Region Champion. They will host the quarterfinals on Sunday. The next thing you have to do is take advantage of those moments. But for what we saw from Nova Southeastern earlier. It's going to be a handful for this Flagler team because Nova Southeastern is deep, Nova Southeastern is physical, and Nova Southeastern has speed. Yeah, it's whether or not Coach Martin will change how they play or whether they'll stay at the same plan as they've, they've had all season. But personally, I would stay at the same plan as they've been successful, as we've seen, throughout the campaign. Three minutes and change left in this one as that long ball will come all the way back to North, who's out of her box. She'll bring it back into the box and smartly pick it up and then quickly outlet it. And again, a reminder, after the conclusion of this match, we will have the presentation of the Southeast Region Championship Trophy. Stick around for that. We'll have that on this webcast. And then be sure to tune in on Sunday for the national quarterfinal, as it will be Flagler against Nova Southeastern to see who advances to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the NCAA national semifinals. And both Flagler and Nova Southeastern looking to make their first foray into the national semifinals. Nielsen again, and that will be a goal as Nielsen passes it. And Bryn Wexler has her second goal of the match. And it, I think we can say it's the exclamation, exclamation point on yep. this one. With 2.25 to go, it is 8-1. Eight 
8-1 Flagler here in the Southeast Championship match. A convincing performance over the Wingate Bulldogs who came in again. Nothing to hang their heads about, Dan. They were picked seventh in their league. They came in as one of the lower seeds, seventh seed in the regional. But really caught fire at the right time, made it to the championship match for the second time in program history. As we're going to get a shot on goal, save by Madison North. Krakauer with the shot for Wingate. But really a fantastic season for the Bulldogs as they went a lot farther than a lot of people around this region thought they were going to go. That yeah. reflection corralled by Frail. Yeah, there's not nothing about how well you've done during the not-so-conference game matches. It's just how you play in conference, and obviously they've did well and they've proved people wrong, which has been a surprise to some. One minute to go in this one. Mejica with it for Flagler again, displaying the fancy footwork. Gets it ahead, but played forward by the Bulldogs. And then a turnover there and a shot, and Wingate is going to get a goal with 50 seconds left. It was a misplay in the back. And for the Bulldogs... Number six, Kat Stockford gets herself into the score list as Stockford picks up her third goal of the season. And again, a teaching moment for Flagler. You want to play the full 90 minutes, and now you've got something to talk about when you go back into that locker room. Yeah, it's just, as we saw in the first game today, just your mistakes will get punished, and it's just what's happened here. So 8-2 the score, but you know we said, we knew Wingate was not going to give up. And how often do you see that, Dan? A 11 v 9 goal for the team with 9. I mean, you, still, you got the opportunity. You still have to put it in the back of the net, which you did. So again, all credit to Wingate for competing hard throughout this whole regional. But... 15 seconds remaining. It is going to be Flagler's moment as the Saints will be Southeast Region champions for the first time in program history and remain undefeated on this season. Four, three, two, one, zero. Flagler wins it 8-2 and is your 2019 NCAA Southeast Region champions. Dan, thanks for joining me on the call. Enjoyed it. Good luck on Sunday. As Dan will bring you the national quarterfinal between Flagler and Nova Southeastern here at Saintsfield. Stay tuned. We'll have the trophy presentation here moments.
Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. At this time, we would like to recognize the winners of the 2019 Southeast Region. Presenting the award is the NCAA Championship Site Representative, Mary Rob Plunkett. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the award to the 2019 Southeast Region Champion, the Flagler College Saints. At this time, we ask head coach Ashley Martin and the team captains to come accept your trophy. Let's give all of these outstanding student athletes a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your support of NCAA soccer. Fans, the Flagler College Saints will take on the Nova Southeastern Sharks on Sunday at 2 p.m. right here at Saints Field. We hope to see you there, and please drive home safely.